there and welcome to Snow Thoughts by Rita. Welcome to this video where I'm continuing to talk about how to apply the principles of visual interest to achieve your desired write-up aesthetic. So as I've mentioned before, visual interest is just literally all the things that make your outfit visually compelling. And we're going to keep talking about the write-up essence. If you want to learn more about that, you can watch some of the links I'm going to leave below. But today we're going to go through the different archetypes in my write-up system. As you know, there are five archetypes in the write-up essence. We have the role model, the princess, the icon, the priestess, and the power. And unlike some other systems where an archetype is more of a checklist of like, here's what you need, you know, two silk blouses, a pair of pants like this. In my system, an archetype is really meant to be more loosely interpreted. It's more about the storytelling with your style, the intention, and depending on where in the essence quadrant you are and what archetype really speaks to you, you have a different kind of focus, a different story you wanna tell with the clothes, a different set of strengths and struggles. So in this video, I'm just going to walk you through all the archetypes and give you an example of a person so you can see exactly how we can apply the principles of visual interest to do this visual storytelling based on one person's interpretation of the archetype. We're going to get started with the role model. The role model is somebody who sets a really high standard expectation for herself and her style, and she wants her style to really correspond to the social role she's embodying. But it's not about like fitting into the role that's expected, but always bringing that touch of the extra, that healthy dose of extra that she really wants and needs in order to feel good about her outfits. So all of that extra visual interest that brings the drama, the glamour, the mystery, the intimidation factor that she wants. And for our example, we're gonna take Anna, who let's, she's a school teacher. I think she would be a literature teacher. That's what really spoke to me. So how can Anna dress to embody her role model archetype in her work. So here's one example of a teaching outfit. We have a white blouse with a black skirt, there's a belt. The blouse also has some sort of frills on it. There's uh, black boots in the mix. So it's kind of a simple, but also very striking and very put together and very extra outfit. And to me, she's kind of channeling like a Victorian literary heroine in this look, which gives her this like, you know, very extra, I'm an English teacher, inspiring, but kind of mysterious vibe. And so top of this look, she would have this like really, really cool black hair bow so she has the skirt the shirt the hair bow then she just has a simple pair of black boots and a big black leather tote because you know i gotta carry tons of stuff and that finishes the look and then the next day maybe she has the same boots and the same tote bag because that's her go-to pieces but she removes the hair bow and she adds instead this very drama black choker necklace and she swaps out the previous outfit for a black dress kind of a shirt dress and it's not just a black shirt dress, but it has this kind of embossed floral texture on it. So it has a really pretty shimmer and there's a pattern, there's some sort of in visual intensity and interest in it as she moves. Even though it's just a really easy thing to get dressed in, it's a dress and it really meets her feeling again of being this kind of prim and proper, a bit intimidating, inspiring teacher. And then we have an outfit for parent night where I think she just continues really leaning into this very preppy, refined collegiate style. So she has this matching suit with the waistcoat and she goes all in with, you know, the watch, the gold earrings, the monk strap shoes to really complete the ensemble and give it this very sophisticated, refined look. And again, I mean, if you think about this, this is so extra, right? There's no need to be this dressed up for the situation, but for her, it's very anchored to like her wanting to show the parents that she's really like that type of teacher. So the clothes are really helping her tell the story she wants. And then for admin day, <laughs> you know, she comes in just to do some grading. It's literally just a suit, but it's for the sleeveless blazer. There's a bit of this checkered pattern, but it's a very relaxed soft fit. She has her comfy shoes on, just a tiny little bag, you know. It's a very casual outfit, but again, like, it's her idea of casual, which is still wearing a suit. But you can see that it's, it's a comfortable outfit that's meant to be kind of low maintenance and low fussy. So how does she create the overall level of desired visual interest? She does textures and patterns and she also uses some just kind of bold silhouettes and kind of matching dressy style outfits. And then when she's completing the look, she has the harmonious color story, textures, everything is matching. Plus she has some extra details like the hair bow or the necklace just to add that extra touch. So that's the role model. Now let's look at our princess. So in my system, the princess, she's further out on the right and she can be like just a bit above the line but she can go quite high up so again she has a pretty big range 
the fundamental story of the princess, it's like literally think about a princess, right? Things that are just taken for granted to her, just as a fact of her existence, is very fancy, very luxurious, very extra to everybody else. And the thing the princess really needs to do is, similar to the role model, following her standards because that's what she needs rather than following other people's standards. But there's kind of a lighter touch to her rather than trying to fulfill some specific role. I think it's like she just really likes things to look beautiful and to have that extra touch. She likes it to be very refined, this high radiance, the very inspiring qualities. So for example, I chose a college student named Beth. And the first outfit that Beth is gonna wear is this floral matching set kind of with a coat. And she's gonna wear this to study. And I mean, if you've been to college, like people don't, they just kind of wear sweatpants to study. But Beth is like, I can't focus unless I have my cute outfit on. And also, even though obviously it's a quite dressy outfit, it's a shirt and pants. It's very comfortable and relaxed. But it definitely makes a statement because of this bold color, the uh, story, the pattern, like the contrasting pattern. And she doesn't try to downplay it, right? She just kind of continues the theme. She has little white earrings, maybe she has little backpack shoes. Beth, you know, she's a college student. She doesn't want to own a million things, so maybe she really favors just a few colors, so it's really easy to mix and match the accessories. Then she also has some other outfits where they're just matching sets, continuing this theme. It's a skirt and a sweater, or just a top and a shirt, always in really comfortable silhouettes and kind of just relaxed fit in construction. But she has these really bold patterns and just, you know, wearing a full outfit like that is quite dressy and that's what she needs. So she takes this black and white outfit and she adds some playful details like the pop of color with the shoes and then the matching bag and then just a white coat. So the whole ensemble again is like very refined and she really has this very ex visually expressive, very put together, very extra look. And if Beth is gonna go to some evening event with her student society, she can go for this black and white polka dot blouse with a little bow tie. I mean, it's like very cute, right? It's almost like ironic because it's like, I'm a student, but she's really leaning into it. She can have the red lipstick just to add some more oomph. And of course, for shoes, she has these sparkly loafers because you wanna add in a little bit more statement. Otherwise, the outfit feels a bit understated. But then she also has this geometric bag. So you can see how she's bringing in just like all of these interesting details while maintaining this overall very like dreamy, refined, polished, almost formal look that she prefers. And then for, you know, a birthday dinner, then it's like the heels come out and the skirt that's like very romantic with this ruching and the little floral earrings and the textured clutch. So again, like, you know, even though she just has kind of a knit t-shirt style top, all of the accessories and just the way all the things pull together and this very strong theme of the outfit, you know, the heels with the ties, right? This is very dressy for a student, uh, but you know, it's a very special occasion, so it makes sense. <laughs> So to achieve her desired level of visual interest, Beth, she's using high contrast color schemes, she's using bold patterns, she's using details on the clothing, and then her accessories also play a role. They're either matching or they're providing this kind of pop of color, visual interest, she has like sparkles and flowers, and just really bringing in that little extra with those small touches. Next up we have the icon, and the icon is right in the middle of the right of quadrant, she can kind of go a little bit in different directions. The story of the icon is that her style is an extension, like an inevitable part of her personal mission. Whatever it is that she is trying to create in this world, her style is a really strong part of that visual brand. So she wants it to be really memorable, really bold and very unique to specifically her, like the thing that she visually wants to be known for. So it's quite cohesive, but and also very original. So for example, I chose like an author slash artist, let's call her Celia. And Celia, she is kind of a quirky, dreamy type of person. She likes a very colorful, retro aesthetic, and that is a part of her visual identity as an artist. And of course, she could be a very different icon and an artist. She could have a very boho look, maybe with lots of like draping, or a very romantic look, you know what I mean? Like there's many different themes, but hers happens to me this very like colorful, quirky, visual identity that she wants to be known for. So for example, if she's going on a lunch date with a fellow creative person, she has this color block outfit, these very radiant colors. You can also see that it's not just the shirt and pants, but like the pants have these buttons on the side, the shirt has stuff on the cuffs. She has a matching handbag and shoes that are in a pattern that kind of picks up the colors of the outfit. So again, it's a shirt and pants, but there's so many different pieces making that really strong visual impression. 
And here's another outfit Celia can wear for like a podcast interview here with this more retro dreamy feeling. She has this blouse that has these patterns that's a bit 70s. So then she leans into it with these velvet pants and shiny boots and this round bag and she even has these pink earrings. So you can see that everything really fits together visually on the theme, but it's also very extra, right? It's like there is no really like minimal quiet part of her look. Like every piece has some sort of element of visual interest, whether it's shape, texture, pattern, or detail. And here's some outfits that Celia can wear to like dinners, parties, you know, etc. Just being out and about and I wanted to show you this like set of outfits so you can see that Celia she has kind of a set of visual elements that she enjoys to create visual interests with so bright colors and just bold patterns and kind of quirky things she's not really playing that much with jewelry um, but so she has her own vocabulary and that's the thing that Icon will often do she kind of wants to figure out what the look is and just create versions and iterations of that so you have some room to play but you don't have to be always thinking about it because you want it to be really memorable and recognizable so now we'll look at the power and the power is very up and kind of to the right she can even go a little bit to the left but it's the upness that really defines her and the power is what it sounds like it's a person with a very strong personal mission and intention she really likes the dramatic the high effort this very cohesive intimidating mysterious look and her dressing is very logical and results oriented she has a personal mission in her situations and she dresses in the way that's going to get her the desired outcome so for example i have diana who like works in media you know maybe she's like in the middle of her career okay so what's diana gonna wear in her life <laughs> So first she's gonna go to a business dinner and this is a business dinner which really wants to impress people because she's networking, you know, she wants to show them that she's like powerful and to create a strong working relationship. So she goes for this like very striking ensemble with this wool cape coat that's very powerful. And the wool cape coat is kind of the centerpiece of the outfit. Underneath that she just has a maroon, you know, knit dress. I mean, it's, it's really nice of course. And then she has a maroon matching handbag. She has these chunky earrings, chunky rings, just everything to really make a bold statement and to show people that she's like, you know, really powerful and make sure that they're impressed by her. Or if Diana goes to like a happy hour, you know, mingle on the terrace, she would show up in this really cool snakeskin suit. And again, it's such an interesting outfit, not only because it's a suit, because a lot of people there would be wearing, you know, suits or semi-suit stuff, but it's the snake print, it's the shine, it's the contrast lapel. So she's adding a lot of visual interest to the outfit. And then further, she uses accessories to enhance that. So instead of downplay it, she plays up like the shine with the metallic shoes. She has a bag with this heavy chain and she has these sunglasses to really add in the glamour. And again, like in this setting, again, she just wants to impress people, right? It's networking, so the cooler she can look, the better that is for her. And you know, this is a very, very cool outfit. <laughs> Okay, but it's not all business meetings for Diana, so she can also go out for like drinks with the girls. And then she's wearing this really cool tube top, this pair of trousers. Again, it's it definitely like has a lot of drama in the look and there's this high effort intimidation factor. It's not just that she has these pants, but they have buttons, you know, she's wearing heels, she has this big necklace. And then she would have this tiny micro bag with the lock on it. I don't know, it's like such a flex. I think the impracticality of it just adds to like the fun of the outfit. And obviously when she's going out for drinks, she just wants to have fun and like look cool and you know be herself or whatever and so this is a great outfit for that and she could also go for a date night where she would again go for kind of a strong look with the boots and this mini skirt and then she has this very glamorous jacket because you know it's romantic and she has the earrings so it kind of gets her into this feeling that she's like a powerful woman but she's like ready for romance <laughs> so and i feel like this the outfit really tells that story so i like that for her so diana she is creating a lot of visual interest in her outfits through shapes through textures through patterns right there's a lot of these visual interest elements and her accessories are also playing a role because they're so cohesive to the outfit they really amplify the look and they're bringing in even more just like to look at and finally we have our priestess now the priestess is all the way kind of up in that right corner you know she can kind of flare out a bit but she's really up in the right and the story of the priestess is that her style is really in service of the values or the institutions that she represents. 
Part of that is that to fulfill her unique role as the priestess, she needs to visually distinguish herself from others, to place herself visually in this role of the priestess, which means that for her, like visual interest needs to be very, very high in the outfits in order for her to fulfill that desired role. So for our priestess, I chose another college student, but I was thinking she's like the head of a student society, law society, humanities society, businesses, you fill in whatever society you want. So Emily, she's the head of an important society. So here's what she should wear to like a welcome night, you know, when she's like addressing all the people who are interested in joining the society and she really wants to impress them, right? The point is she wants to show up there and for them to see like this club is like the coolest club, full of really, really fancy people. And if I could be in the club, I would be a fancy person too, right? Because that's the values of the club. So then she could wear this super fancy outfit. She has this white shirt. The shirt has an embossed pattern on it, this big bow. She has these pants. Uh, now the pants themselves have some buttons on the side. She has these patterned, really fancy shoes and this matching bag, right? So this whole look is very, very glamorous, quite intimidating. It's very, very fancy. And I think it really achieves what she wants to achieve. Now let's say like Emily, she's gonna go to a lunch meeting with some people who are planning a project for the club and she shows up in this brocades pattern suit with a matching turtleneck and then she has to the turtleneck these flat shoes this matching bag and she has a manicure right and again you're like why are you like here come on why are you wearing a suit but the point of the meeting is that she really wants to impress on the people like hey this project is really important for you to be involved in organizing it is an honor for you and you should take it as seriously as you possibly can. So by showing up looking like this, she really impresses on people this, like, you know, that's not, the clothes aren't the only thing doing that, right? But they're a big part of what she's trying to do, which is to create a sense of importance around the project because that's what benefits her society. And for a lecture, she could even again show up in this like kind of suit with the white shirt. And I guess she can have a matching backpack. She can have a watch and some shoes. And it's kind of like, who dresses like that to go to a lecture? But you never know, right? It could be that she has some important meeting after the class and just meeting with some sort of donors and she needs to impress them. Or it could just be that she has some sort of general value that as a representative of the society, she needs to like, you know, since she's the leader and it's a very big group, she needs to like just visually distinguish herself at all times, right? And so that could be the logic behind the look. And then finally, we have a student event. <laughs> Maybe it's the same one our like princess went to, <laughs> right? So it's evening time and everybody's gonna be dressed up. So the priestess, she needs to go further, right? <laughs> than everybody because she needs to be distinguishing herself as the person behind the event and kind of the official head of it. So we'll give her this top with this really big bow. We'll give her the skirt that again has a lot of texture and some boots, but it's, it's kind of like minimal, elegant, but very bold and striking. Of course, we'll give her some bracelets and a really cool hair clip just so like the outfit feels really complete and it's really festive and helps her stand out. So we can see that Emily, she's using patterns, textures, colors, embellishments. She's using basically everything she can to create a lot of visual interest for herself. And even though her accessories are more on the subtle side, they're really complementing and finishing the looks and making it all look really finished and if you think about it the accessories are not really that subtle it's just that they seem kind of subtle, like in reference to what she's normally wearing so now we've gone through these five archetypes and of course it's just really fun to think about them and to put together these outfits but i really hope that you understand better this idea of how you can bring in these different aspects of visual interest to achieve this like the upness level you want and in correspondence with your intention in the situation. I want to invite you once more to get the lookbook that we made. It is more than 150 pages. There's 200 examples. And we're going through all of the different ways that you can create visual interest. So as you saw in this video, some people like they may really like to play with shoes and some people may like to play with pattern and some people may like to play with texture. So the great thing about the lookbook is it includes all of the different ways that you can add visual interest to your look. So you don't have to like think it up yourself. You can just get an idea from the lookbook and you can implement it and see how you like it. So obviously I'm gonna link that below and check it out. So if you want more, of course, on the right of archetypes, you can watch the video about them, but otherwise I'll see you next time for the Left Up Visual Interest video. Bye.